This is a 73-year-old woman referred for ectopia lentis. Uh, she has phagodenesis, a uh, big zonular dialysis down at 6 o'clock and a rather dense cataract. The vision is uh, 2200 in this eye. Uh, here we're going to do cataract surgery. And the first thing I'm doing is putting dispersive viscoelastic in the area where the large zonular defect is. That's uh, going to be pushed into place uh, with an air bubble and compacted so it will serve as a barrier uh, to prevent tripan blue from running into the vitreous cavity and staining the vitreous. So here I'm drizzling a little tripan blue on the anterior lens capsule and that viscoelastic that I put in there will serve as a barrier to prevent it from uh, wounding my red reflex. So now we're going to displace the tripan blue with uh, viscoelastic uh, using a soft shell technique. Here we're going to start the uh, capsular excess with the uh, cystitome, and there's no counter-traction here, so if I start pulling on this, uh, lens will start to move because there's no counter-traction because the zonules are absent at 6 o'clock. So what I'm going to do is introduce a Kugelin hook and use that in my left hand to provide counter-traction to stabilize the lens as I tear with my right hand. And uh, this will allow me to uh, do a more controlled and safer capsular excess. When I tear against the uh, side that has uh, some zonules remaining, uh, I don't need to stabilize as much. Here you can see I'm completing the capsular excess. And I'm centering the capsular excess on the lens, uh, not on the uh, pupil, because the lens is dislocated. Uh, I'm now going to place four capsule retractors to paracentesis sites, and I like to guide these into place from internally uh, using a micro forceps. Here we're putting a little dispersive viscoelastic in the capsule bag to inflate it on the side where there are no uh, zonules, uh, so this will provide better control and more space. I'm going to grab the capsule retractor and position it using my other hand using a 25 gauge micro forceps. Uh, when I cinch these uh, capsule retractors up, I don't want to make them too tight, uh, just tight enough to provide support. Here this uh, retractor looks like it might impinge on the lid, so I'm going to amputate the end of it so that it's less likely to be uh, disturbed by the uh, lid or the speculum. So now we're going to go ahead and do our normal uh, chopping technique for this cataract. And this is about a 2 to 3 plus NS cataract. Um, so we're just going to do our routine uh, horizontal chopping technique. Um, the lens rotates well. We've hydrodissected uh, and the uh, capsule retractors are supporting the capsule bag in lieu of zonules. So we do a couple of chops. We'll go ahead and take out uh, the first quadrant. Uh, this is a uh, Bausch & Lohm uh, Stellaris machine with active uh, fluidics, and uh, I find it's quite good for these kinds of cases. Uh, gives very good control without a lot of flow. And the corneas look very good the next day. So we're completing the fake emulsification here. Uh, we'll go in and we'll go ahead and do our irrigation and aspiration. Um, the capsule retractors are holding things in place nicely. Um, once this is completed, we're going to fill the capsule bag with cohesive viscoelastic. I'm now going to use a Malugan modified Sioni capsule tension ring. A Gore-Tex suture has been passed through the eyelet, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and inject this uh, into the capsule bag. Um, we'll now uh, make a small pyridomy at 6 o'clock, and I'm going to make a sclerotomy about 2 millimeters posterior to the limbus, and I'm going to try to come right in between the iris, uh, the back of the iris, and the anterior capsule. But in this patient, the space is very narrow, uh, and there's a little bleeding here uh, as I enter. So we don't want that to go into the eye. So I'm going to uh, use my right hand to inject dispersive viscoelastic and provide some space uh, while maintaining uh, internal pressure that will keep uh, the blood from entering the eye. Uh, I'm now going to hand 
the uh, Gore-Tex suture uh, to my other hand uh, so I can pull this out through the uh, sclerotomy. We're going to make a second sclerotomy, also two millimeters posterior to the limbus. Uh, and again, uh, this patient, there was uh, a tight space between the back of the iris and the anterior capsule. So I'm going to provide some space by pushing down with my right hand, injecting dispersive viscoelastic, and then I will grab the uh, Gore-Tex suture and pull that other end out. I'll now connect these two sclerotomies with a scleral groove with a diamond blade. And one modification I've been doing for the past uh, a few months is to create a shelf in the scleral groove, a little shelf, so I can tuck the uh, Gore-Tex suture under the shelf when I'm uh, done and I've tied it. So now the capsule retractor is going to stabilize the capsule bag as I inject the uh, single piece uh, symphony uh, lens. Uh, this gets tucked into the uh, capsule bag. Uh, once the lens is in place, I'm going to go ahead and remove the capsule retractors as I don't need them anymore. We're going to sweep the anterior capsule for lens epithelial cells. I feel that this is very important to prevent uh, capsular phimosis that can uh, cause uh, uh, displacement of the capsular bag. Uh, here we are, uh, go ahead and sweeping these lens epithelial cells. And now I'm going to adjust the tension on this Gore-Tex suture by using a slip knot. And again, you do not want to make this too tight. If you make it too tight, it will pull the whole capsular bag complex over and dis, uh, dislocate things as the capsule bag contracts, it'll move to the side where the Gore-Tex suture is. You really just want to make this tight enough to hold everything in place. Uh, if I keep tightening it, it will pull everything over to that side. So I adjust it to the tension I want, and then I'm going to go ahead and lock it in place. This uh, will lock it in place now. And you can see it's already being pulled over a little. So I'm going to reach in with a Sinsky hook and grab that capsule tension ring and give it a little tug to uh, tighten that uh, suture as I rotate the knot in. So here I'm rotating the knot in, and this looks like there's a little bit uh, of slack here, but that's fine because I'm going to tuck that under that scleral shelf that I've created, and that will prevent it from uh, causing extrusion. It'll keep it completely covered, and it'll keep it at the uh, tension that I want. So here you can see that scleral shelf has covered that suture. Here I'm removing the viscoelastic, and as I do this, you can see just how stable this lens bag complex is. It really is very much like a uh, normal cataract surgery would be. We're going to go ahead and close conch tight, and that's actually going to provide a little bit more pressure on that little scleral shelf I've created. And here you can see everything is nice and stable and centered, and the uh, case is completed. This is day one at the slit lamp. The patient's vision was 20-25 uncorrected. Thank you for your attention.